and subhanallah i've been working for many years uh, trying to empower the inhabitants of this globe to do good and to serve the almighty as they are spending their years in the short life that we have here the lifespan and assisting and contributing towards the upliftment of humanity at large so we serve the almighty and we try our best to actually reach out to the rest of the human beings and the other creatures of the same almighty what's the mission to see you sorry what's the mission to see you well this is a beautiful country whereby i think we would definitely need to instill lots of hope lots of uh, goodness within the people the strength to be able to support one another to be able to live in harmony and tolerance with people of other faiths not just tolerance but in fact to respect those who share or who do not share the same beliefs as yourself because they are human beings and to be able to contribute positively to this beautiful nation i think at a time where on the globe many people are looking at the negative side of islam it's our duty and many people have been saying what are the Muslims doing in order to empower or in order to teach the rest of the Muslims the true teachings of Islam that are far from extremism and intolerance, far from terrorism and violence. Uh, and here I am saying, yes, we are doing a lot. And part of what we're doing is we're reaching out to people in various countries across the globe, including this lovely nation of Sierra Leone, in order to try and teach them the true teachings of Islam to say that we definitely stand for peace and coexistence. We stand for respect of one another. And we stand for the highest of divine values that have been instilled and taught and promoted by the messengers of the Almighty from the very beginning, starting with Adam, may peace be upon him, going all the way down to the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, and Muhammad, may peace be upon him too, and upon all of us. So indeed, it's a very powerful message, and I think we must be from among those who champion this cause, and that's what brings me to this beautiful nation. Uh, Chief, what does this one really mean for Sierra Leone? It means a lot, Alaji. Uh, we brother Mufti Ismail Meng in Kamwana, this country. Uh, it really helps see we get hope, just like how it is. It really tells we see if we believe religion, we work for religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will bind we all. You see the amount of people them yesterday we in the street. Or receive we, we create mufti. Then people they are all in, in the tribe of Tewi. Not all have been Muslim yesterday in the land, but they all been the wave to them and they're happy and they smile. This is the we say The only thing we go bind with na religion and belief. So let we hold into religion. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the proper thing. Um, mufti, uh, the Foundation of Islamic Information has invited you to come to say, I don't know, what has been your impression? We deep welcome. I think uh, the way I was welcomed yesterday shows that the nation has been following myself for a long time and I always think that by following a person like me it's more the message that has value than the person because this message is a divine message it comes from the Almighty and for us it comes from the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him whatever I've stood for over the last 20 years, the last two decades that I have been working in this beautiful field of propagating goodness and peace uh, is drawn from divine revelation. Had I not been quoting the verses of the Quran and the statements of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and had I not been promoting that which was divinely revealed, I don't think my message would have held any value. So when I saw the people, I, I said the Almighty is to be glorified. Glorification belongs to the Almighty. As for us as human beings, this is only a sign that they are connected to the Almighty. Yes, indeed, I was overwhelmed. I was touched very deeply because it's a sign of a mu'min and a believer that when you have a guest, you honor the guest. So a person who does not believe in the Almighty will not honor the guest. So when I was given this honor, it only reassured me that these people are believers. They have in them kindness. 
And this is what belief should bring you. When you are a good Muslim, for example, it should show in your character and your conduct. You become a soft person. You become a person who reaches out to others. You don't become hard such that you begin to hate and disassociate and begin to create problems and trouble. That is not a sign of a good believer and a good Muslim. A good Muslim is he or she who reaches out. The more they become closer to the Almighty, the more they understand that Almighty has made other creatures. I must respect them also because he was the giver of life. So if he gave the life of all of those who have life, including myself, what gives me the right to take away that life which was given in the same way that I got mine? So this is a message that we need to keep promoting. And like I said, it's our duty as Muslims to go the extra mile because, you know, across the globe we are witnessing issues that we never want our nations to suffer by. And what we are witnessing is killing in the name of faith, taking life away in the name of the giver of that life. How ironic, how silly is that? It is not religious, it is far away from religion. So we are against all forms of killing. And we do not believe that the solution to our problems is through violence. If we have misunderstandings, the solution is never through violence and through becoming people who disturb the peace and security of where we are living. Look at the nations of the globe. Security and peace is what will then promote the growth of the nation. No nation that does not have peace or security can grow. And no matter how wealthy a nation might be in terms of minerals and resources, what we need to realize is that nation will never flourish if they don't have peace, if they don't have harmony, if they don't respect one another. So this is the beautiful message. I noticed this when I entered the, the country. The people are thirsty for goodness. The people are thirsty to be guided to the right direction. I pray that anyone who comes to your nation to guide this beautiful country and to guide its people would only guide them with that which is fair, that which is filled with respect of others, that which is filled with goodness. And as strict as you may be with yourself in your obligations unto the Almighty, such as your prayer and your charity and your fasting, you need to understand, be tolerant with others. So this is something I got from here. What is my main, a lot of people want to know the key message you have for Sierra Leoneans. Well, I've just spoken about this key message that I do have for this nation, and I will reiterate it in different wordings and using different examples, but I believe that that is the message not just for Sierra Leone, but we carry that flag across the globe because we don't want to be from those who don't learn from the mistakes of others, from the shortcomings and the downfall and the destruction of others. When you see someone making an accident with a vehicle at a certain juncture, every time you come to that part of the road, you must alert yourself. You must be careful. You know, this is where I saw someone making an accident, so therefore I need to be extra vigilant. The same applies to us. We witness people across the globe doing things that have resulted in absolute destruction in some countries. We need to stay away from that. We need to learn from that. And if we don't talk about it, we won't be able to educate our people. And I firmly believe that if we have amongst us elements that promote intolerance, we need to weed them out. And we need to make sure that that will not be promoted in any way. Because uh, true religion, true religion belongs to the Almighty. And that Almighty has never taught us to resolve our matters through violence and hatred. So this is the message I have for this beautiful nation, as well as for all the nations across the globe. And inshallah, we will repeat it and reiterate it as uh, the programs continue in this beautiful day for the next two days. Uh, uh, a lot of people want to know, especially you mentioned that um, peace is very, very important. Security is a core value for, any, for every nation. But Sierra Leone, March will be experiencing a very, very big event. We will have election. In other words, we will go in out there to vote for leaders that will, they will assume the upper echelon of the political arena. What kind of message do you have for Sierra Leone? Yes. Especially this time and times. Just a few months, we'll get onto elections. I think what Sierra Leone needs to know, uh, firstly, this country has been tested by the Almighty in so many different ways. And this country has been through so many challenges. We don't need more man-made challenges when we've already had challenges that for some reason we have had really very little to do when they struck us. I give you three examples. The first is that of Ebola. And we, we prayed for this nation and for others who were affected by this devastation 
and we, we prayed that it does not spread. And mashallah, by the fadl and the grace of the Almighty, it was contained and it was actually uh, eradicated. This, then the nation has suffered as a result of this in a very big way. Secondly, we had the floods. When the floods came in, there was other destruction that took place. And thanks to the Almighty, the nation came together once, a day to, uh, once again to be able to help one another overcome the floods. And suddenly, we have had land, uh, mudslides. The mudslides, unprecedented, unheard of in this part of the world, I think, or in this nation at least. And when that happened, we all felt the shock waves of it throughout Africa. And I think a lot did throughout the globe. And we prayed for this nation and we continue to pray, not only here, but all those who are suffering and struggling across the globe. Now, the list has become so large that when we are name, naming where the problems are, we actually miss out some of the names. Not because we want to, but because human nature, we cannot remember everything at every time. So you've had these disasters, but the nation has still survived, come together, and we have helped one another. We have stood up, whether you were Muslim or Christian or any other faith that you belonged to. We stood up and we assisted for humanity, one another. This is something that needs to be promoted. And I believe if you are going through elections, as much as I'm not a politician and I don't like to make political comments, what I will tell you is maintain the peace, maintain the stability. Don't ever let violence or uh, you know, destruction be a means of achieving something. That is not the way for human beings. In fact, if you witness animals as well, they are orderly at times. You know, we see the livestock we have, we see so many different animals, they are orderly at times. Sometimes mankind is less orderly than animals. And we need to keep on reminding ourselves we are more honored, we are far higher, we are far greater. We have, a, we have a brain, we have posture. Like the Almighty says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Indeed, we have created mankind in the best of postures. You know, the Almighty challenges us to say man is the highest. So if we are really the highest, we definitely need to make sure that we promote these values of orderliness and morality and goodness, especially when it comes to a, a very important event such as the elections in your nation. You don't need to be uh, uh, struggling and suffering uh, in terms of security and peace when We've already suffered enough in a nation, uh, that which was perhaps considered natural disaster. We ask the Almighty to continue to bless this nation and all the other nations. And we ask the Almighty to make us those who will be as peaceful as possible whilst fulfilling and exercising our right as citizens of this nation. Subhanallah. Well, uh, Fambule, we now go to the Fambule audience, them, the Ansel graduated with. Uh, Mufti Ismail Mink, if you think one or two questions, so we'll allow me to able ask some. Yes, sir, your name, sir, you tell your name. I am Al Haji Kelfala Bangura, the chief imam for the Sierra Leone police. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we in the security sector, the armed Slav, um, we are profoundly grateful to the Foundation of Islamic Information for bringing Mufti Mink here to guide this nation. My comment is that you've spoken about security. The peace, security, and stability are the prerequisite for the foundation, the propagation of Islam. What will that benefit this nation? How will we all advise people who are listening that indeed security is a prerequisite even for the propagation of Islam and development as a whole? I want to thank you for coming to Sierra Leone. We are much, much grateful. Thank you for so your, just your, your arrival. One, then move to as a one. Next. Yes, next. Your name? Introduce yourself. Your name, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, <coughs> my name is Senge Abdurazak. Um, one of the uh, reporters from the Voice of Islam radio station. Um, we have been following Mufti Meng for the past seven years now. Uh, my question is. Um, I we really need uh, to learn more from Mufti Menk. But then we want to know how do 
Muftiman can help us to get more availability of some of in, in lectures and uh, uh, more uh, profound trainings that we will use as media practitioners at least to spread the word of peace and uh, security and that of stability in, in our nation. In terms of this video, you mean, in terms of yeah. this video? Uh, the video, the, yeah, the materials okay. that will lead us okay. to that, educational okay. materials that will lead us to that. Jazakumullah. Okay. okay, thank you. I've been advised to just take one, then that's the end. La one, last one. So we'll give Mufti the opportunity now to answer your question. You're live on AYD television. Aladu Usman Dumbuya, Chairman of Fossil. This is a form of a request. On behalf of the entire people of Sierra Leone, the government and people of Sierra Leone, specifically the Muslims, I'm requesting Mufti Menk, if it is possible, to put in a schedule once or every three years to visit Sierra Leone. That's my okay, wish. Inshallah. Oh, we we make sure that the second one, Inshallah, who asks him, we'll see. You can answer the questions. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The first is regarding the peace and security and stability. What I want to say is something very simple, and that is, look at the nations of the globe. Look at those nations that do not have the peace and the and the stability or the security, and ask yourself: Have they grown? Have they developed? What has happened? So if you look at those, you will realize the importance of not following that bad example and the importance of resolving matters and disputes. It's normal to have a dispute or a difference with people, but it's not normal to resolve it in a way that creates a bigger problem or more problems. When you have one problem, you resolve it in a way that it is solved without creating more. If you become a person who loses the sense of the peace and stability and begins to become aggressive or violent, even sometimes killing, uh, you know, may the, may the Almighty forbid, but it has happened in other countries. So that would result in the destruction of your own nation to begin with. Nothing can prosper. And this is why Iman actually means faith and conviction. And faith and conviction comes with Aman. If you notice, the root words are the same. You know, you see the a, ma, and the na in both of them. So, iman and amn, they, they are very closely connected. If you believe correctly, you will be not only a promoter of true peace and harmony, but you will achieve inner and outer peace. And this is something that we really need to learn. So, we will never be able to teach people goodness if we ourselves are very violent. You see, people turn away from Islam, for example, because they think that what's happening on the globe is Islamic teachings. But we are here in order to clarify that that is not Islam. In Sierra Leone, Muslims have existed from a long, long time. They make up perhaps a large percentage of the population. Where is the violence and so on that Islam teaches supposedly? Yet we've been living in harmony for so long. All we are trying to do is to preserve what we have because there are elements of mischief who will keep on coming and trying their luck. We will never allow them to succeed because we would like to preserve the, the goodness of this respect. So this is as far as the question on security and stability and what it would do for us uh, actually goes. The second uh, question that I was asked uh, was a question connected to how can we benefit more from your talks, your lectures. I can tell you that we have a platform that is absolutely non-copyright, known as muslimcentral.com. If you have an Android device, you can download an application to listen free of charge. I can upload it from my phone within minutes of delivering the talk on condition that the internet connection is correct and it gets to millions of phones across the globe. So uh, you just need to download the Android app from Muslim Central. If you'd like to do it, go to muslimcentral.com and you can download the app. Or you can go to my website, which is muftimenk.com and you can actually download it from there for your Android device. On Apple, we use the platform known as the podcasts, the Apple podcast. It is also instant. There are hundreds of lectures, hundreds of hours of talks. They are copyright free, which means you can broadcast them, you can forward them, you can download them and so on, on condition that you don't edit it in a way that it changes the meaning. Also, I have a YouTube uh, page, which is uh, youtube.com slash muftimenk. You can visit that page and you will see uh, that the, the, the 
all those programs that we have are actually non-copyright. You can broadcast them, you can beam them, you can download them. And if you'd like to uh, purchase copies in order to, to beam and promote and perhaps uh, whether it is the radio or the television, you can visit sukislam.com and purchase it from there. They will send you a copy from South Africa. You will have to buy it, obviously. Sukislam, S-O-U-K-I-S-L-A-M.com, and you would be able to purchase it from there. So all this is non-copyright. Similarly, if I have a moment, sometimes I do when I'm traveling to a country, uh, I do carry with me a, a few copies in order to give some stations. But unfortunately, this time, because my journey is taking me to six nations, I am not going to be able, or I was unable to carry much with me. So this is as far as this goes. Uh, like I said, uh, the, the, the material that we, whatever we have said in terms of lectures uh, in Islam and in religion, that is not copyrighted because I cannot copyright the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, the third is a request that I come here as often as possible. Uh, you have said once every two years, I will try and make it once a year. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I will see finally how many, how many days are you going to stay with Sierra Leone? I will be in Sierra Leone, uh, inshallah, up to Sunday. I, I have Friday and Saturday. Today and tomorrow, I have uh, commitments and engagements. Sunday, I will wind down and leave, inshallah. So two days is good uh, <laughs> because I think if you notice what has happened is uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the parts of the capital city have come to a standstill. Yeah. So if I prolong my stay, I might inconvenience people. They will get <laughs> irritated of my presence. <laughs> you know, for yeah. now, it's okay. <laughs> okay. The minute you overstay your welcome, I think you will be unwelcome. <laughs> so as, as much as I appreciate yeah. everything, I okay. also need to be realistic. And I need to understand that, you know, two days is quite good. And I hope the nation can forgive me for that. But trust me, it's in your benefit. I'd rather be here. I'd rather be here for a short time where people say it was too short. I like that statement. It's mm -hmm. nice. You know, when you speak for 45 minutes, they say it was too short. Then to be here for so long that people say, ah, I think you should leave, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Uthi. Uh, Sheikh Faouki, final words? So. Uh, we say plenty thank you to Allah first. Then we say thank you to my brother. We take a long time for come. I've been there with them inside the vehicle just now. Text, text, call, call, and say we go to self, we schedule. The old man need them, you know. So for me, can't see we na Sierra Leone. I have come Zimbabwe to Sierra Leone. Na long journey. So for just me, can't see we na here today. I believe say this na promote to Islam. We tell and thank you for that. Allah bless him. Then the words, then the way they sell to me.